For number six, what they're saying here is that sample one, we're labeling them x sub i, which means there's x1, x2, x3, x4, and so on. And sample two is y sub i, so y1, y2, y3, and so on. And this is matched pairs data, so x1 matches up with y1, x2 matches up with y2, and so on. And so our difference between our values we're going to call D1, D2, D3, and so on. And so our null hypothesis is that the mean of all these differences is zero. And so our alternative hypothesis is going to be based on what we want here in the first sentence. The researcher wants to show the mean from population one is less than the mean from population two. So if we're getting a smaller values here for our x's than we are for our y's, when we do this subtraction, and if the x's are smaller, if they're less than, this subtraction will result in a negative number because y is bigger than x. And so our mean of these subtractions should be less than zero. For number seven, we're firing shots from a gun. And we have matched paired data here because we have two ways of recording how fast uh, the bullet is going or measuring the velocity coming out of that gun. And so for the first shell fired, it's measured by instrument A and also by instrument B, both on the same shell. Uh, shell number two, again, measured by A and B. So this, the reason it's matched pairs data is that two measurements are taken on the same shell from the gun, the same round. So is there a difference in the measurement of the muzzle velocity between device A and device B at our significance level of 0.01? So I'm going to jump into StatCrunch to figure that out. out. We're going to open our data here in StatCrunch. And so our null hypothesis is that there's no difference. Our alternative is that there's going to be some difference between instrument A and B. So stat doing these means we need t stats and this is paired data so make sure you pick paired between instrument a is sample one the measurements in column b are sample two and when our hypothesis our null is that there's no difference between the two instruments our alternative is that there is a difference so hit compute at the bottom and you get a p-value of 0.76 that is not less than 0.01, so we will not reject the null hypothesis. And the last part of the problem is to construct a 99% confidence interval about the population mean difference. So jumping back into StatCrunch, I'm again going to use T stats paired, comparing A and B. I'm doing a confidence interval now, and to confirm it was 99% confidence, so I need to enter 99 here, and when I hit compute, it'll give me the lower limit and upper limit of my confidence interval. So what this means is that we're 99% confident that the mean, the average difference between our measurements between these two devices is somewhere in this interval. For number eight, we have a researcher studying water clarity, and on specific dates measures the clarity of the water, and then on, on that same date five years later measures the clarity again. And so since these two measurements from our samples are paired together because they're on the same date, we have matched pair data here. And so all the measurements in sample one are paired with a measurement in sample two because they were taken on the same date. So that's why we have a dependent sample. And now we're going to see if there's evidence to suggest that the clarity of the lake is improving. So let's jump into StatCrunch. Our null hypothesis is that there's no difference. that the water clarity has not improved. So we're taking our initial observation and then after five years 
And our null hypothesis is that the difference between the two means is zero. And there's been no change in the clarity. And our alternative is that it's going to be less than because we were hoping that it improved, which means uh, our initial values are our clarity is less than uh, our observations five years later where the clarity is better. So let's compute that. We get a p-value of 0.04. Our level of significance was 0.05. So since our p-value is less than that level of significance, we do need to reject the null hypothesis, which is a good thing here. That means we're accepting the alternative, which is that the water clarity has improved. For number nine, we have dependent data. Again, we're matching fathers and sons. So our first sample is the height of fathers. And then each, uh, each father is matched to his son. And our second sample is the height of his son. Now the question is, we're going to determine if sons are taller than their fathers. Which means our first sample needs to be less than our second sample. So we're doing the less than here. So if you jump into StatCrunch, we're going to be doing a stat, T stats here. We're finding the difference of the means, and we got paired data. Fathers and sons are matched up. Height of father, height of son. And our hypothesis test, our null is that they're the same height, and our alternative is that the fathers are less than their sons in height. So hit compute and it'll give you, scroll over here, the T stat, which here we have negative 0.465. And we need to use the classical approach for this problem because that's the way the answers are phrased. And so we need to find what the critical value is when alpha equals 0.1. So our critical T value in Excel, you can use the formula T dot inverse, enter what your alpha is, and your degrees of freedom. We have five degrees of freedom because there were six pairs uh, of matched data in this experiment. And so here's what we get for our critical T value. And Excel gives you the left tail test, the, uh, the less than test, which is what we want. Um, so negative 1.4759. And jumping back to StatCrunch, our T stat is greater than that. It's not farther to the left. So that's a non-reject. We will not reject our null hypothesis because our test statistic is greater than our critical T value.